Hello! How's it going? Welcome back to probably the first video of the year. I've got the traditional Bub Visuals uniform on with the uh, hat and the, the sweatshirt. And so today I thought to kick the year off with a bang, we'd go over my setup. Because, not gonna lie, this has changed quite considerably over the last year or so. Anyway. Let's talk about that. If you've been watching this channel for a while now, then you may know that I am a digital minimalist. What this means is I essentially try to simplify my digital life, centralizing everything wherever possible in order to make my life better. However, I kind of went with a different approach for this setup. Seeing as I do spend a lot of time at this desk, whether that be editing video or writing scripts, mixing audio, or even gaming, I wanted to keep my productivity and workstation separate from my kickback downtime station. So I built this split setup in the hope that I won't get distracted by gaming when I'm supposed to be working, and I won't find myself working during dedicated relaxing periods. With this goal in mind, I've tried several different setups over the past few months, but for reasons that I'm going to explain later, I eventually settled on this one, and I think it suits its purpose very well. First off, we have the centerpiece of the setup, which is my 2017 27-inch 5K iMac. To be honest, this thing is kind of getting on a little bit nowadays, and while it may not sound that old on paper, gotta remember this is computing years, so three years is a pretty long time, especially for an editing computer. Soon, I am looking forward to replacing it with one of the M1 MacBook Pros, but until I can get my hands on one of the 16 gigabyte variants, I'm probably going to hold off and for the most part this iMac is pretty much perfect. I found that performance in apps like Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro has been pretty great. Only occasionally going a little bit wrong in Premiere but usually that is on Premiere. Of course it's also great in things like Photoshop and Lightroom as well as Logic and this thing has just generally been a powerhouse. I've made pretty much every single video on this channel with this computer along with when I used to edit professionally. I did use this computer to do all of my editing then and overall this has just been a really solid machine so if you want to get into video editing and you just want to buy a computer that you know is gonna last for years I really can't recommend the iMac line enough and yeah while I am personally looking forward to upgrading this machine has been pretty solid next up we have the peripherals which obviously are a very important part of the computing experience I mean this is what you're actually gonna be interacting with after all so I find that it is important to get a decent set of peripherals which is what finally led me to upgrade from my magic mouse to be honest well that was actually a pretty decent mouse, especially for video editing with those gestures. This MX Master is ideal. The multiple buttons, side scroll wheel, and of course the ergonomic design make this thing a go-to mouse for a lot of video editors, and now myself included. I do find that this is an incredibly comfortable mouse to use, and if you are a video editor like me, then of course this is important, because reducing cramp wherever possible, always a good idea, because it means you can get more work done, you can be more productive, and your hand won't hurt, which is obviously a very very big benefit. Yeah, overall MX Master, solid choice for a mouse. Next up, we have the keyboard. Now, if you've been around for a very long time now, you may remember when I did a fair amount of keyboard content on this channel. And while I have now, of course, moved away from that, I still do really like mechanical keyboards. So my personal keyboard of choice is the Magic Force 68. Now, those keyboard aficionados watching this video may now be saying, hang on, that's a very cheap keyboard. Well, yeah, it is. I wanted to build my ideal keyboard and I found that this Magic Force 68 layout was perfect for me. Yeah, a full arrow key layout, which is of course fantastic for video editing, but also that smaller design, which means I can fit everything on my desk. I decided to finish this keyboard off with some nice retro keycaps, as well as with this custom cable from Aseni, which I simply love. And we have my keyboard. Honestly though, despite the fact that I have mentioned specific peripherals in this video, you really should check for yourself. I mean, peripherals are a very personal thing. As I said before, this is going to be what you're going to be interacting with the majority of time that you're at your desk. So picking up something that works well for you is definitely a good idea. So don't just listen to what I say. Try out peripherals for yourself and see what works well. Next up, we have the audio side of things. Starting out, we have the newest addition to the setup, which are my Grey Beach Studio 3s. Now, to be honest, I haven't heard any particularly good things about these headphones. But when I was visiting a friend in Bristol, I found a pair of these headphones for 120 quid, which is a pretty great deal. And I have fallen in love with these headphones. The noise 
noise cancelling combined with the battery life make this a perfect set of travel headphones for me. And considering I usually do use speakers when I'm at my desk, I really didn't see the point in getting a studio pair of headphones, especially when these do the job so well. Other things like seamless connection with Apple products and just the way they fit on my head means that I am very pleased with these headphones. Next up, we have my microphone setup, which is my Shure SM7B. Now, if you remember, for a while, I actually used a higher end microphone than this. I had a Neumann microphone before, but that thing was so sensitive. It just did not make sense to be using it in my space and for the things that I do, because I'd always have to set up my vocal booth. That would take like two hours and it was way too hot in there. And I ended up just not using it at all. So that said, I went back to my previous microphone and my experience has been phenomenal. Well, it does certainly require a hefty amount of gain. If you know your way around Adobe Audition, you can get some really great audio out of this thing. I attached it to this springless boom arm, which is super helpful in keeping my desk clutter free. Because of course, while well, having a microphone stand when you're in the middle of a room isn't really a big deal. When you're sitting at a desk, it can be kind of claustrophobic. I've tried lots of these scissor stands before, and to be honest, most of them have been terrible. And so buying a high quality one for this short SM7B setup, definitely worth it for me. So my speakers of choice for over two years now have been the PreSonus Eris 3.5s. I actually got these at a local music shop while I was hanging out with some friends. Got a really good price on them, and I wanted to see what a pair of studio monitors were like, so I picked them up. Two years later, they are still my main editing speakers, simply because I love them. For a setup like mine, these are actually a good size. If you know about studio monitors, then you will know a lot of them are extremely large. So these speakers, not being overly large, means that they can comfortably fit on my desk, but there aren't actually that many compromises. For example, they do still have full one inch tweeters, along with good sized Kevlar woofers, which is very rare to see on speakers of this price point. Overall, they are really good for mixing, affordable and reliable, and I really can't ask for much more. After this, we have some personalization. Of course, we got some pot plants, the school bunny my friend Lee got me for Christmas, and of course, the lighting. Lighting is, of course, an important part of making any setup look special. And recently, while I have moved away from RGB lighting, I still do like to make sure that my desk is nicely lit. For example, I place my desk at a 90 degree angle away from my window, because this way I do get some nice natural light, but the glare on my screen isn't too intense. So I can always work at this desk even during bright summer days, which is of course important. In terms of artificial lighting, we have this warm white light in this Pixar style lamp, which I personally think is awesome. When it starts to get dark, I will usually switch this light on, and it just adds a nice overall ambience to my setup that would be lacking if I was just using my ceiling lights. As for the other light we have, we have this blue gelled LED light. Now I actually use this as my backlight in my talking head sections, and the reason I went with the blue one is of course because it gives some nice color contrast against that warm white light. Of course, sticking with typical gamery fashion, I have decided to keep this one on my gaming desk. And once again, I don't keep this light on at all times, but when I do, I find that it does actually add a nice little ambience to my desk. So yeah, if you're considering spicing up your desk, maybe before you go spend a crazy amount on like a new keyboard, try adjusting your lighting and see what that does. All right, so next up, we're gonna be talking about the second desk that I've added, which is essentially just my downtime desk. This is where I play video games and store fun things. That's pretty much it really. So let's talk about that. As we can see for the desk itself, it is pretty simple. In fact, this is an old salvage desk that I've had for years now. And somehow, despite the state of it, it always ends up back and a part of my set up. The first thing I have on my desk is, of course, the secondary monitor, which isn't a monitor at all, actually. This is a budget 24-inch monitor from, like, five years ago, I think. And to be honest, when you do put it next to my 5K iMac, it does look kind of low res. But for what I use it for, it works great. There's very little noticeable input lag, and while it's not 4K, do bear in mind, I am only using this TV with my Nintendo Switch. So yeah. Totally fine for me. In fact, all that I really cared about was that it had some built-in speakers as well as an HDMI port because obviously can't play Nintendo Switch without an HDMI port. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the TV. It works. Moving on, we have my Switch dock where there is my Switch. Here I charge my Switch, my Joy-Cons and my Pro Controller, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit more detail next. But if you've seen my previous video, then you will know I love the Nintendo Switch. It's one of my favorite consoles, I think, ever now. I love the attitude Nintendo went with for the Switch. The casual game anywhere approach works very well for me because as I've said multiple times before, I am not a competitive gamer. I simply like occasionally playing some fun video games in my 
downtime to help me relax. And I think the Nintendo Switch is pretty much perfect for that. I actually got this used in CEX over a year ago because I got a very good deal on it. Yeah, can't really complain here. Next up, we have the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which I really like. One of my friends have been telling me to get these forever and I was never really that convinced. I mean, I like the Joy-Cons and I kind of thought the lack of triggers would be weird, but oh man, this controller is awesome. It's super comfortable. Connection's awesome. Got some nice big A, B, X, Y buttons. Of course, no Joy-Con drift and the bonus edition of a real D-pad. So if you want to play some vintage games, the Pro Controller might actually be one of the best controllers you can buy. Overall, in terms of the Pro Controller, big thank you to my nameless friend who introduced me to it. And after that, that's pretty much it in terms of things on these desks. Anyway, now let's talk about why I decided to do this almost split desk design rather than just getting like an L desk or a slightly bigger long desk and keeping everything on one desk. Setting up a desk where I can keep work and play separate has actually been incredibly helpful in restricting myself from either overworking or getting off task. Before, I would occasionally catch myself getting off task when I was supposed to be working or I'd try to stop have a break, but something on my desk would get me back to work when I was supposed to be relaxing, so I decided why not separate the two. So far, this has been extremely successful, and this will most likely be my new system heading into 2021. Well, this system certainly isn't perfect, and I will no doubt refine further, maybe even after recording this video. I always end up doing that whenever I record a video and say like, yeah, this is a good thing, because I have to spend a lot of time thinking about said thing. I always end up like finding one little thing that I need to tweak. So yeah, that might end up happening after this video. Pay attention to, <laughs> to the background. So while I will over the coming year most likely modify this desk in a little way, this is certainly working well for me right now. Anyway guys, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Probably first of the year unless I either really mess up the last video I had planned for the year and that ends up being the first or I become an editing machine and get this video out also on the same day. Unlikely though, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Let me know by the way if you have any setup tips of your own. I always enjoy reading your guys' comments. As for now though, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now and I will see you guys in the next one.